Welcome back, episode 10, House Leg, or how's everybody doing out there? Let's jump right back into it. Uh, well, we're, we've, we're not going to jump back into it like that quick. Let's bring the ticker back down. But um, yeah, I'm so pumped to be back. Um, made it to actually episode 10. And what's so dope about this is that I'll be straight up with you guys. Uh, I've been under the weather past couple of days. And, uh, you know, recording was... Uh, it was a little, uh, la- really, well, it was really like low on our priority list. But watching this new season of Game of Thrones has really inspired me. Uh, seeing seeing my contemporaries, really, I, I love it. I see like so many new series out there and everything. So it just got my juices flowing back in. So we're we're back in with the puffy face, blue eyed, uh, Halle Berry, Valerian, none other, Lady Sienna. Yeah. So when we left off last episode, we sent Daro to work in Port Vader. Now, Port Vader is a pretty interesting place. All right. Um, it's led by Nysaria of House Oros of Oros word. And you guys must have definitely heard me like go off before about you know the random world and the lack of creativity. Sometimes I'm saying like, how are we gonna get a house? that's called of Oros and we get something so beautiful and majestic like Valzerian or Valzerin or whatever but it looks good and it sounds good too or um, we'll get back to Port Vale let's check this out so our courtier Jacar Arbarian and we all know what we did to the Arbarians you know they put some respect on our name he's turned into a skilled steward okay so that means that we've def- we're have we definitely building up some good characters in our realm that have the state stewardship trait. Uh, and he's married to Seattle of House Marantus. And we're going to take care of some, some house cleaning right now. Uh, but before we do that, we've got this message from Freeholder Danar of Tyria. And word of Tyria, right? There's a bunch of these, but we'll work these out as we uh, as we build our realm out, and we'll get rid of all of this. Like this is just straight bullshit. Like, come on, game, be more creative. Of Tyria, nah, we can do better. Or, um, but we got a message from him, and I think he's trying to like sway us. Uh, Holy Fury brought in these two um, options over here where you can sway somebody. So that's what I think he's trying to do. That or. That or maybe try to um, make us one of his wives, right? I think he has a spot for a third wife. He's already got one. You know, he's got one that's a Gagosil or Gagosai or whatever, however you pronounce that word. Uh, so, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, so, we've got this message. He's decided to send me a small gift as a token of his friendship and good intentions. Okay. Very thoughtful. We'll get 25 prestige. We'll take it. But uh, back to Port Vader. So Nysaria, right? Um, good trope too to her. The Mons is about 5,262. So she's definitely probably like been recently in a skirmish or been raided or something like that. Um, Port Vader is actually part of the High Lordship of Mice of Fear. And that's led by Lady Dela of House Daycris. Uh, now, my Sophia is not that big of a lordship in its own right, right? It's got a demand of 2009 men. So whenever we end up um, taking over or, you know, setting our sights really on the lordship of Port Vader, going to be a little, going to be a little uh, skirmish over here, but we're, we're looking forward to that. I got a, I saw this chair, Josh, so that means that we lost somebody. All right. And before we go into like who we lost, let's get back over to Seattle of House Marantus. Now, House Marantus, again, because the game isn't too creative with this house names and everything, we've got actually two House Marantus currently in our realm. We've got the House Marantus that is the current rulers of the Lordship of the Marble Mount of the Marble Mountains, and we've got House Marantus, which is a noble house within our realm. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch up the house name of Marantus within our realm. So let's actually, no, I'm not going to go off too far from Marantus, but maybe. Maybe something with a Z. House Zorntus, yeah, there you go. Cool. You know what, let's, uh switch up the sigil just a little bit 
have a little fun with it. Size, I still like the green. Won't go to like dragon heavy. Let's see if they have something with coin. Yeah, a lot of beetles. Okay, elephants, birds. Okay, I like this. So, all right. All right, so now we have, this is better. We've got a proper, proper custom house now. All right, so see, I love how Zorn says, right? She's, um, but she's married to, matrilineally married to Jake Arbarian. So the Arbarians, they're, they're currently still ruling in Binaros, which is okay, which is okay. Not a, not, not too much of a big deal. We're going to work on getting them out, but right now sienna right sienna has a couple of things right she can be twiddling her thumbs and waiting for her army to get back in or we can kind of like delve into our realm just a little bit more and uh see what else is out there because we know diplomatically where we want to be right we're expanding to the marble mountains and hopefully port vader but what is going on um behind the scenes right she's got four kids she's unmarried so there's definitely some things realm wise that we'll be focused on on and maybe um maybe some things outside of valeria as well all right before we do that let's let's check this out so we've got this requisition from alix that he wants us to spend about 40 pieces of gold on something and we'll get 25 prestige you know what yeah i'm sorry i'm just not a big fan of uh spending money all right so back to uh lady sienna and this around all right so the marble mountains right now we've got eleanor and she's pissed off that we've got a claim on her and this is pretty interesting so she's just taking a hit wow this is a let's pause the game so looking at our our current um right looking at our current uh situation realm wise we're rebuilding our own troops right we've only got six thousand and six thousand five hundred and sixty three men in our demands that's available to us that's including House Hataris and Eleanor Isle. But the marble, right? They they've they've been hit too. And I think they're and I think they're kinda like recovering from they're definitely recovering from the war that we had with them. Right? So we can we can continue to twiddle our thumbs. Um or we can kinda like go for the juggler right now. Cause even if um the kingdom of Galios, even if Rhaegar wanted to get involved right now, right? He's still low on troops. Nukiria would be, mm, yeah. yeah. They're the, they're the, that's the lordship that we have to be worried about because their demands are still pretty high. And if they raise their banners and they get involved in this, yeah, we are definitely going to need more than 6,000 men. Because between, um, the 5k that's about here the close to 2000 that they have here yeah and the cure we're still a little outgunned so we're not going to um we're not we're not going to set our sights on the marble mountains just yet but what we can do is start to get to work on lady shira of house by now so let's run the game back again all right so she hates us right we we did a lot to her house now sienna she understands like the roles of of diplomacy and everything so we just can't revoke her title yet or can we okay so um she's actually shiara that is she actually she's actually plotting to kill us so i think that might be grounds enough to revoke her title or at least to imprison her let's see who's uh, joining the plot all right so joining her is her son jaycar all right and that makes sense that makes a lot of sense all right so shiara and this is something let's see where the plot power is at the plot power is actually at 23.1 percent hmm 
Okay, so I'm pretty sure we could fabric plot to fabricate treason and we'll get that right. But if we imprison right now, we have a 32% chance of success based on um, the relative entry. But if we fit, if we fail and she declares war on us, um, nobody's going to care because she's leading a plot to try to kill us right now. So internally, yeah. Since we know that she's trying to kill us, and we understand that she's always going to hate us, I think it's really about time that we, yeah, I think it's about time that we just get on with it. And I think what we're going to do is, yeah, we're, it, I think Sienna and Lady Shara, I think this is the straw that breaks the camel's back. So what we're going to actually do is we are going to... Hmm. Interesting. Because if we get rid of Shiara, right? Her son Rhaegal takes over. And he hates us as well. He, he's going to hate us forever too. By at least negative 25. Because of... Because that we force married his younger brother. Matronilially to Sienna. Of House Zorntus. Yeah. So he's never really going to like us. We can send him some gold. That's going to improve his view of us by 32, which is going to get us on the right side of things. But if we kill his mother, or if we try to imprison her, and she raises her banners in rebellion or whatever like that, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, he, he's going to hate us more. And that's still not going to help us with the lordship in that part of our realm. So we, yeah, we've definitely got to figure out what the what the hell we're gonna do with Binaros. Um but we've got something cool that just popped in. So Tagon, he just had a son, and Tagon's been through some BS with his wife. Uh, to be honest, straight up with you guys, we all know that Vela cheated on him with our Castellan, Jakaris, and Tagon. He stood by. I'm not sure if I would have stuck by with that shit, but he did. So. With him having a son, this kind of gives him somebody he can live through, right? So he's named his son Maelor. I like it. All right, let's set up Maelor's focus. Let's actually set him up on faith and see where that takes him. Hopefully, that gets him on the learning path. Not sure. I've got to look into that um, in between episodes. So while we're while we're while we're celebrating. Uh, Maelor's entrance into our realm. We got a notification that Larian is slowly gaining, the, slowly learning the art of swordsmanship. So right now he's a poor fighter. He still might be able to turn into a skilled fighter or a trained fighter. We'll see. But Larian, somebody that again, he's our ward. He's our adopted nephew. So we're gonna hopefully just continue that. And his marshal's looking pretty good. He's already at a 13. All right. So, uh, Larian, he's he wants to hang around us a lot more. So we got a note of another notification about him. My little ward, Larian, always has his nose in the books and spends almost all his time amongst the storm singers of Valerian. All right. So does that mean he becomes a zealot? Does that mean I won't train? A, I won't. Mm, let's see. So if he becomes zealous. His marshal goes up by two, actually. Wow. I did not know that. He gets monthly piety of, of one. And we're all pretty much Valyrian gods over here. Mm. You know what? We'll, we'll go for it. And, and I think that makes sense, especially with the way that he's turning out to be. Right? He's pushing the marshal, so he's not really going to tolerate somebody that's not a Valyrian. So let's go ahead. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so Larian's turning into a pretty, a, a pretty, a pretty interesting character so far. He's the heir to the house of Baharan. His older brother is ruling, still a young ruler, but has uh, gained his independence from the free, um, the free city of Gagos, of the, Go of Gagosos. So the, the Baharans are currently, they're currently keeping up with the Joneses, right? 
Sienna, she's she's expanding her realm, and the Baharans, they've solidified their realm. So Larian's definitely somebody who will, I, I think, in the next couple of episodes, maybe episode 13 or 14, um, as Sienna, if she survives that much, we could definitely see Larian coming into play a little bit older and a little bit wiser. Maybe, maybe somebody that we send into battle for us. Who knows? Um, but the time has come for us to spend a bunch of money because our kids are getting older. So the first sign of this is really, uh, we get this notification. So Bathan, he's our heir. Uh, we want him to have the best kind of like education possible. This is going to get him four. If we move with the spend 40 gold option, if we spend 40 pieces of gold, that means his learning increases by four. He's currently at a six, which isn't bad. And that really assists with the education outcome, which we're going to push for to be a martial focus. All right, so we've got Bathan on his way to being hopefully a, a good character on the martial side of thing if right now he's a poor fighter might actually switch up his um guardian actually let me see who's the smartest person yeah i think it's about time that takes on um takes over this uh, just because his marshal's pretty high well not high i mean his learning is pretty high so i think that's going to um translate into is that that should translate well we're gonna take a take a risk with Bathan but I, I'm pretty sure that's that should translate into Bathan's martial education being pushed you know especially since he's being taught by the smartest person in the realm all right so while Bathan is having us spend money and he's currently hanging out with Tagon now trying to um, become the best possible um, Marshall inspired heir to the throne get this notice so Austin Val Rokoff has been a leal and able servant having successfully completed many tasks in the aid of Greece he's been running shit for like maybe like four months I'll be honest with you uh, it would have been seen as the right and honorable course to reward him with certain incomes and grants so as to foster greater loyalty hmm. so you know what we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll give Austin about 10 more pieces of gold Okay, so back to Binaros. So we've still got to deal with the whole Shiara thing. How are we going to work around us? Mm. So I think with Shiara, what now is Sienna the kind of kind of character that will plot to fabricate trees and I just don't see it yeah I really don't see it okay and we got this message of one of our enemies actually Queen Victoria she's actually dealing with a revolt in her land so um, yeah that's something that we're gonna keep an eye on but right now Shiara she's the person that we really gotta we really gotta see what we're gonna do about her hmm so she's plotting to kill us. Let's see what her plot power is currently at. Her and her son are plotting to kill us right now. And if we imprison her, nobody's going to be mad. But we've only got a 32% chance of imprisoning her. Hmm. Got to deal with her son, Rhaegar, who will like take over the realm after if we depose her. Hmm, or revoke her title and what I really want to do I think uh, what I think we'll, what we really want to do is we want to get the Albarians out of there yeah I, I think it's that time all right so we'll, we'll get back to the Albarians but something just came in so Denise Velazarian has lost to Lady Illyria of Valyria so what does that mean I'm pretty sure that Denise's daughter has taken over no wow this is um this is pretty interesting all right so 
basically, I think last episode we went over it, but the High Lordship of Valyria, they were in like a civil war, and the Lady of Valyria, I remember because she was blinded, the Lady of Valyria, she was, she instigated the the war against the tyranny of Daenys Felzerian, and what I thought, I thought that if Daenys wasn't able to, you know, keep her realm together, I thought her daughter was going to take over. Right, because I'm pretty sure that was the heir. Pretty sure. But um, no, it's going all the way to her son. So I think they must have moved the, the, I I think they must have adjusted the realm law for it to become agnatic, cognatic, or whatever. I think that's how you pronounce it. But um, yeah. But Daenys is currently imprisoned by, um, Illyria. So I wonder how long Daenys has before like her head is on a spike. Okay. So let's get back to. Lady Shiera. So what can we do to Rhaegal? Let's see game wise. If we invite him to court, will he join? No. We can duel him. But we let's see his personal combat skill. And he's a 38. It'd be a shame to waste him. He's a pretty good character. He, he is a pretty good character. But sending him sending him 15 pieces of gold, I just don't think it's worth it. Not his mom. Not his mom. Let's see his mom. Now his mom, if we go if we revoke her title, then we're gonna be we're gonna get like the whole tyranny shit. And that's something that yeah, Sienna is not a tyrant. I think she rules kind of like justly, but with a strong fist, especially after what she did to the um, Obarians. So, but I don't want to get the whole tyrant thing going on. If we imprison her, all right, because of her plot to try to, because of her plot to try to kill us, she might, she might. She might like raise her banners. And is that something that we can afford right now? I know we could take out toe to toe because she only has like 209 men. But yeah, and I think we could survive Gelios, but could we survive Nicaria and the Marvels all getting back for a round two? Especially with our troop totals only like we're like we're we're getting close to eight thousand. We're not even at eight thousand yet. Hmm. So you know what? Yeah. I think um I think what we're going to I think the smartest thing to do, right? Let's go to our council. Let's see what they would say. We have Jakaris who doesn't really do anything. He's just kinda like worried about Yeah, what is he worried about, right? He doesn't really do anything for me. As of yet. Let's see what we currently have him doing. And and we're reaching to reaching out to our council to see like what some some of these characters would say. Hmm. You have, all right. So let let's get through this notification first. So we're we're reaching out to our council, but we get this information about Lord Freeholder Daenar and his insistent um, attempts to try to you know get in well not get in our pants or like anything, but to get cool with us. So let's check it out. Lord Freeholder Daenar has been very insistent about spending some time with me recently. He hopes that we will be keen on better terms, that we'll be on better terms if we only take a few days to know each other better. Okay, sounds like a marvelous idea. Okay, cool. All right, so we're, we're, we're hanging along with Lord Freeholder, Daenar of Tyria. And unfortunately, we haven't got on pretty good. So his attempts to sway me aren't, yeah, they're, they're not going good at all. And we're actually um probably like not on good terms for like the next, um, two or three uh, months but he's trying to rectify that so he sent me a letter and let's see what it says it was a quick and concise message inquiring about my good health with a comment of the possibility of us to keep him more in contact with each other you know what so um, let's try that because Terry is a a uh, Terry is a pretty powerful place right 8340 something men yeah, so maybe if we could form an alliance, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. So so keeping, you know, we're we're not gonna just like um, we're we're not just gonna shut down what the Tyrians have to say. But back to the Obarians. So what we're going to do because, yeah, we're not gonna ask them to end their plot. We're not the Shiara that is. We're not gonna revoke her title because we can because we're gonna get the whole tyrant trait thing going on. What we're going to do is we're going to imprison her. And and we're going to roll the dice to see where it takes us. Let's go. Alright. So we failed to imprison her and she's raised her banners in rebellion. Okay? So let's check this out right now. So she only has two thousand two hundred and ninety eight men. Should be able to take this out only with our vassals so let's raise our vassals up let's get everybody all right so we've got 468 men over here those are the men from eleanor isle so, so we've got them moving they'll be joining up with the army of Daynar. he's one of our commanders all right so we've got um Choose from our city of Pyrus. And that is choose from Lenor. Not sure who this guy is. Alright. What we'll also do is we'll get these troops over from Greece over here. So right now we should get close to about 1,200 troops, a little bit more. And again, stopping this rebellion should be pretty easy. So interesting move. Yeah, really interesting move. The forces of... By Norris has actually fled on ships, so they've actually abandoned. Yeah, that's crazy. They've actually abandoned the lordship of By Norris. What do they have in plans? Now I don't think they don't. They have wildfire here, so I'm not sure they would be setting up a trap. But yeah, we'll keep our troops going here, and while while we're yeah, you guys see it, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna shit on him. You guys see it. I can't front on him. While we're while we're leading our troops um, with Lenar and Daynar. We've left Austin, Ron, and Rokoff down in Pyrus to kind of like just protect our holding down there. And we get a message from Daro sent by a raven that figured out that we were on our way to Binaros. He, he sends the raven there to meet us. And while we're on our way there, one of our men shoot down that, shoot them down, fearing that it's an arrow heading to Binaros from maybe the new high lordship of valeria maybe the kingdom of gelios but we're going to intercept everything like that uh, thinking that it's a raven to uh, our enemies no it's actually a raven to lady sienna and we get this message from daro my liege my work in port vader seems to have come to fruition by bribing cajoling extorting threatening and forging documents i have managed to fabricate a claim on the lordship of port vader presently held by lady lyceria of Port Vader. I leave it up to you whether to press it or not. Yeah, we're definitely going to press it. All right, and we've got two amazing claims that I'll be honest with you, we can't really waste too much time on this battle. All right, we're we're going to deal with the Obarians once and for all. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Rago, I think we might have to kill him. I, I'm not sure, but we're, yeah, it, we've got to get rid of them w once and for all. And wow, look at this, look at this, these troops. You know what, they're actually, yeah, that's crazy. The the Obarians have actually taken their troops and they've descended on the Lordship of Greece. Yeah. And yet, it's not looking good for them, but yeah, you guys are going to have to wait for the next episode to figure out how this one wraps up. Crazy episode. Daro has pulled it off again. That is, uh, yeah, to think about where he came from right the schmuck that i was like getting on at the end of the episode but um yeah you guys have been dope as always take it easy hit that like button subscribe put on your ogs and yeah join that discord join that discord a lot of dope stuff happening on that discord but i'm out of here take it easy peace bye